Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, welcome on this first Sunday of Advent. And we are, uh, those of you that are watching from home, we're grateful that you're joining with us in worship. And uh, I hope all of you had a very lovely Thanksgiving and uh, that all of your leftovers are gone. And I say that because now, of course, we have to prepare ourselves for Christmas candy and fruitcake. <laughs> so, get ready. Um, our Old Testament scripture passage this morning is from Jeremiah, chapter 33. And it's uh, just verses 14 and through 16. And our New Testament scripture is from the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 21. And I'll be reading verses 25 through 36. Uh, the information, of course, is always in your bulletin, and I will announce the passages before I read them. Uh, just a reminder that you're all invited to stay after the service for refreshments, where we gather for a little fellowship, and uh, just trading around how much we all ate at Thanksgiving. Uh, do you have any announcements? Suzanne? Your, okay. I didn't know if it was on, I couldn't tell. Um, the other thing is, I wanted to make sure that we acknowledge the fact that the handicapped bathroom was uh, through a donation from the Mill City Library. We were thankful to have a place for the library, but it was needed that we have some kind of a, have a bathroom available to our patrons, and so we uh, made sure it was handicapped accessible, and then that was a donation from the library to the church. So. And indeed, a, a generous donation it was, and, and the church is most grateful. Um, Ruth, do you want to talk about decorating? Yes. Okay. Next Saturday, the 4th, we'll be decorating the church um, at 10 o'clock. So hopefully a lot of you can come and make short work of it. Uh, there's things to do that are sedentary. There's things that are that, to do that will require ladders, possibly. Um, so anyway, come and join us, and we'll see how beautiful we can make the sanctuary for Christmas. I would add one more little bit of information. Sure. There will be soup. Did you say that? Yes. I mean, I didn't say it just now, but yes, I said it. Oh, okay. um, so there will be hot homemade soup and uh, uh, bread, which I can assure you will not be homemade, but will be tasty. So come and decorate and enjoy not just the decorating, but the um, fellowship as well. It's always um, a lovely activity. Um, in two weeks from today, that will be on December 12th, there will be a special congregational meeting uh, immediately following the service. It should take us no longer than 10 minutes. Last year, Suzanne served as our nominating committee's um, member at large and was the chair and did a wonderful job. And Suzanne, we thank you. And we thank the other members of the committee as well. But um, committee members cannot uh, serve two years in a row. Um, they can serve often, but they just can't uh, repeat one year after the other. So we will have a very quick uh, special meeting on the 12th uh, to elect a member at large. So you might be thinking if that's something that you would be interested in doing, and, and uh, let me know. I'll pass the information along. If you would like to be an Advent reader and candle lighter, please let me know. We're looking for people that would be willing to do it. You can do it in twos, you can do it in threes, you can do it as couples, you can do it as family members, as friends. Um, we have someone uh, for next week, but we need uh, someone for the third and the fourth Sunday. So if that sounds like something you would like to do, let me know. And I will give you the scripts. Now, I want to assure you, you do not have to memorize the scripts. This is, you just simply have to read it. So, uh, uh, any other announcements? Okay, then a word from Curtis on stewardship. I'm 
not going to say? Uh, the, the general meaning of, of stewardship has to do with managing resources. So the Stewardship Committee in the past two weeks made presentations about the work and accomplishments of the church during the past year. Diane spoke about programs and activities that have been ongoing as well as building renovations and improvements that have been completed. Dan spoke about the work of the Pastor Search Committee. My task this morning is to speak about the meaning of stewardship as used by most church congregations, especially at this time of year, and that is to ask for money. Uh, we try to not be so blunt, so we speak about financial support and specifically about pledging. The obvious stewardship message is the church needs financial support to keep operating, to keep the doors open, if you will. And pledges, which are statements of intent to give financial support, are important so that the session can plan for the coming year. Pledges are usually stated in certain amounts to be given weekly or monthly. Many of you may have received a stewardship letter containing a pledge slip and a return envelope. We hope those who are able to offer financial assistance might return your pledge in December or early January. If you do not have a pledge slip and envelope, you can, of course, simply mail a statement to the church treasurer of what you may be able to do. Also, folks who feel a pledge may not be possible at this time may think in terms of a one-time gift. Please remember that if you mail something to the church, that you should include the post office box for the post office will not deliver without that. Our post office box is number 426. Finally, I, I'd like to take a, a moment to extend a special invitation to attend services in person if you're able to do so. We do continue to follow state masking regulations but as Carol said, uh, we have resumed uh, the long-standing, joyous tradition of coffee fellowship following worship. Soon the church will be decorated, as uh, Ruth mentioned, decorated for Christmas. And the sanctuary is always lovely at this time of year. There will be special music, as always, that befits the season. It's always a special joy to worship together during this blessed season. Thank you. Well, just right. Uh, I'm using a new lapel mic. God bless you, Ruth. Um, and it's a little harder for me to attach it to my rope. So if I'm not loud enough, let me know. And either I'll, I don't know what I'll do, but we can always turn it up a little bit. Yes? I just didn't see the thing hanging around your ear, and so I thought you didn't have your mic. Oh, so oh, that, that was what I was trying to signal. Oh, OK. Um, Let's begin with an opening prayer. Gracious God, the Advent season is upon us. Unfortunately, we often translate Advent into the buying season. But if we were to place our hope in tinsel and wrappings, we would forget the greatest gift of all. So open our eyes, our hearts, our spirits today to behold God's gracious love, born in a lowly manger. We pray all this in his name. 
Amen. Why are we lighting the first candle? Long ago, God spoke to his people of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah told us to hope for a descendant of David, one who could bring justice and righteousness in the land. We too long for a world of perfect justice. We too wait for God's righteousness. We light the candle of hope, waiting with all creation for God's promise to be born among us. Will you join with me in the response that you find uh, in, the, in your bulletin? O oh God of hope, we know there is much wrong with the world. We know how far it is from what you intended. Come to us again. Be born among us that all the world may be made new. Amen.
What would you like to share together this morning? Johnny. Well, uh, William is doing very, very well. He's up to, to almost eight pounds, not quite. And he's about seven and seven, eight, seven, something almost. Um, Larry surgery on uh, last week went very well. Um, uh, and he's very well. Uh, the continued part says he's not looking forward to surgery in about three weeks. So please keep us still in your prayers and please will continue to go ahead and be So we continue to keep Larry uh, in our prayers and the Bender family in general. Uh, but we rejoice that baby William is doing so well and continues to uh, put on weight. Most of us are trying to avoid that, but God loves him. That's wonderful name for him. Are there others this morning? Curtis. Um, I'd like to ask for prayers for my daughter-in-law, Kara, uh, Scott's wife. Um, uh, Kara has uh, kidney stones, and she's uh, already undergone one surgery. Uh, she's facing two more because there are some complications, and so um, in the next couple of weeks, she expects to have uh, the, the next uh, surgery. So prayers for Kara and for uh, Scott and the family, please. Absolutely, we will keep Kara in our prayers and Scott and the family as well. Pray for the success of the surgery. Are there others this morning? Suzanne? Uh, I got a text from Sandra Kay a little bit ago and she said she wasn't quite feeling up to being joining us this morning but wanted to wish everyone well and said she hopes she will be here next week. Well, we indeed do too. Hope she's feeling better by the way. Are there others? Um, let me add just a couple. Um, prayers for uh, Kate and her family, and for Patricia in particular, who has been sick. Um, there is just a lot of little bugs and viruses going around, and uh, Patricia has just really been under the weather. So let's keep her in our, in our prayers, and uh, Kate and Tim as well. So, um, and I, really, I, to celebrate the wonderful Thanksgiving gatherings that so many people had. And um, God bless the people who donated the amount of money that they did, that so many people that are homeless were able to have a um, Thanksgiving dinner and a place to go, and uh, were able to escape um, out of the weather. And it is something that should be upon our hearts this time of year especially. Is there anyone else? Dan. Uh, first, for Mike and Sarah Stair, they are both sick oh. and unable to attend church this morning. So they are scrambling uh, at Gates Church for music, a little bit of good, and uh, somebody to preach. They have somebody for that, so just be with that. Well, God bless them. I can't imagine how long it's probably been since Mike missed the service. Um, unexpectedly. So God bless them. If there's any church that can move straight ahead through the Sunday service, I'm sure that they'll be able to do that. And uh, I know they have some extra special help. Um, relatives from within this congregation with Kara and Jake. So, uh, but prayers for, for Mike and, and Sharon that they recover quickly. Are there any others? Yeah. Um, yes. Travel mercies today because there's so many people that are traveling, and um, so pray that everybody is safe on the roads and eyes are open and heads are clear. Absolutely, lots and lots of traffic um, today from the four day four day weekend. Yes. Um, let's take a moment then for a silent prayer that you might lift all of your joys, your concerns to God. So let us pray.
this day as we have come bringing our prayers for those who are dear to us and for the world in general. Let us remember that God has already heard our prayers and the cries of our hearts. For God will always respond in love. As we feel we are being overcome by the darkness, God brings us the absolute light of love to pierce through the dark. The Lord has not and will not abandon us. God's mercy and love are coming to us in many wondrous and surprising ways. Behold, the love of God that is around you all the time, and rejoice, for hope is given for you this day. We pray for all those who are recovering from medical treatments, as well as those facing treatments in the coming weeks. We pray and remember all of our shut-ins and those dealing with illnesses. We pray that they will feel God's strength and comfort. We lift up Sandy, Robin, Terry, Lance, Steve, Kara, Larry, Vivian, Patricia, Mike, and Sharon. We lift up all those who are, have um, come down with any kind of illness in the past week. And we ask for God's healing and comfort in all the lives of those who are ill. As we do each and every week, we lift up our troops who are serving around the world. We are always grateful for their service. We pray for their safety and we remember them especially those who are away from families on another holiday. And we pray for comfort and hope for all the families who await the soldiers' returns. And together we join in the prayer that our Lord taught us when he walked among us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us bring our gifts to God. <coughs>
uh, can do the work that you order. Uh, and again, we thank you for that greatest gift that you have ever given anybody, and that is the gift of your son to us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. If you would like to pray more hymnals, we'll uh, sing together our song of prayer, Thou Didst Sleep Thy Throne, which is uh, number 292, 292, and we will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Who uh, attended the temple. 
And Jesus said, and this is uh, verses 25 through 36. And Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This ends our reading of the scriptures. May God grant us wisdom in these ancient words. As I mentioned, the text for today, uh, the Gospel text especially, from the 21st chapter of Luke, is about the last days and what we are to look for. Listen to this one section again. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on earth distress from the roaring of the seas, and fear from the shaking of the heavens. And then the Son of Man will come on a cloud. When these things take place, stand up and raise your heads, for your redemption draws near. I find it odd that the most hopeful season of the Christian calendar begins in the midst of darkness. When we light that first candle to be used on the Advent wreath, for me, as far as I'm concerned, it's not a second too soon. This Advent, I think I feel especially an urgent need for the light that comes from God. And I do not think that I am the only one. Throughout November, as the days have grown shorter and shorter, and the darkness descends upon us earlier each day, I long for the Christmas lights that just now, following Thanksgiving, are beginning to pop up, to appear on the homes and even on the barns throughout the community. On the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of a new year in the, in the Christian calendar, the lectionary always brings us the apocalypse. It can be Matthew. It can be Mark. It can be Luke. It's still the end of time. So as we begin our preparations for the coming of the Christ child with a heart-stopping passage that predicts the end of the world, Jesus, speaking of signs of the sun, the moon, and the stars, distress, fainting from fear and foreboding, I mean, really, isn't that the kind of language that once you, makes you want to crawl in a hole and stay there? But this Advent, I am holding on for dear life to the reassurance that God intends to make the world right again. And really, despite the fact that Jeremiah is often associated with doom and gloom, I find his message reassuring. He says, the days are surely coming when I will fulfill the promises that I made. And the thing that we know with God is that when God makes a promise, it is a promise kept. And given the empty wasteland all around Jeremiah, I don't know how he could see anything hopeful about the future. And yet he was sustained by his conviction that the outcome of human history was in the hands of God, and God could be trusted to make the city a place of safety and the land a center of salvation. Is the promise of the coming of the Son of Man 
bad news for some, or good news for all. Jesus implies that it will be a fearful thing for just about everybody. But then he adds, now when these things begin to take place, raise your head, because your redemption is drawing near. It is a strange blend of comfort and warning. And I believe this passage reminds us that the work of redeeming the world, signaled by the birth of Jesus, is not finished. We sometimes speak as if the birth of Jesus fulfilled all of God's purposes. But this passage reminds us that God's work is a work in progress. It is ongoing. And we are warned to keep ourselves ready, to keep our minds focused on doing the will of God. Luke ends his apocalyptic section with Jesus telling his followers to be alert so that the day does not catch them unexpectedly. We will be held accountable for how we have lived our lives and what will determine our fate. The decision will be based on our daily choices. Did we welcome the stranger, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, tend the sick, and visit the prisoner? In verses 34 and 35, Jesus warns his listeners not to be caught off guard. He compares the normalcy of their daily lives with the normalcy that will prevail just before the second coming. Ordinary events like eating and drinking and family celebrations. The fault was not that the people were doing these things, but that they were so caught up in the routine of daily living, the shopping, the Black Friday sales on Amazon, that they gave no thought to their spiritual lives. Their problem was not gross sin, but spiritual indifference. And it is something that I think all Christians fight against. It is so easy to seep into our daily lives when we place our attention on unnecessary things. In Luke's text, Jesus warns us not to be snared by earthly distractions, but to prepare ourselves by maintaining a strong spiritual life. And one way to prepare ourselves is to be vigilant in our prayers. Prayer keeps us alert and awake to the opportunities to serve Christ in our daily life. It opens our hearts to receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus modeled how prayer should be a constant in our lives. And this is one of my favorite examples for Jesus in prayer. When times were bad, Jesus found a quiet place and prayed. When times were good, Jesus found a quiet place and prayed. Whatever was going on around him, he remembered to go to his Father in prayer. I doubt that it always made his circumstances any easier. The roads were still covered deep in dust. The sun was still blazing hot. The crowds were still overwhelming in number and in need. But prayer filled Jesus with the strength to handle any challenges. And it can do likewise for us. When life's worries threaten to overwhelm us, we too can find a quiet place to prayer, to pray and center ourselves in God. Many of you, and I would include, include myself, have a certain time each day that we go to God in prayer. Often it's early in the morning over a cup of coffee. Sometimes it's late at night. The household has grown quiet and we perhaps have some reading material. Perhaps it's our Bible. But we simply go to God and release the worries of the day and ask for sustenance, I guess you would say, to meet the challenges of the day that comes, the day that lies ahead of us. And I think that, don't you think that's what Jesus did? Uh, whether he was away from the disciples, whether he went up into a garden to pray by himself, he knew the importance of maintaining that daily uh, connection with his Father. 
with God. What better reminder that our God is a God of surprises? The fact that we know that God is not predictable. What could possibly have been predictable with a divine entrance made in the form of a helpless child? A child born in poverty to a teenage mother. We know that the entry of Christ into the world reminds us that God is complicated, that the workings of God are not always understandable for us. But Advent calls us to pray, to pay attention, to move beyond ourselves, to hear the needs of other people. I want to share with you a little story. I've actually been saving this since April. I knew that there would be a Sunday when this would be applicable, and it is from that most, what can I say, authoritative source. Yes, I got it off of Facebook. <laughs> but it, I, when I read it, it struck me as being such a poignant little story. And so I made a copy of it, and I kind of put it into a file where I keep stories that I like. And uh, it is from April 8th, and it's by uh, a married couple, Daniel and Lisa Groth. And Daniel is actually, the husband is the one that posted it. And I'd like to share it with you. Daniel writes, Lisa and I had to get on a flight unexpectedly this weekend to visit someone we love. And yesterday, we flew home. As we took off and got up over Dallas, we were pinballing around in some terrible turbulence, the kind that makes you close your eyes, collapse into yourself, and get really quiet. The turbulence that turns even the staunchest atheist into a prayer warrior. At that moment, the teenager next to us, with whom we had not yet shared a single word, turned and said very intensely, I need you to talk to me right now. He went on, I have terrible anxiety, and this is my first time to ever fly alone, and this turbulence is really messing with me. I need you to talk to me right now. And so we started talking. Hi, my wife said, I'm Lisa, and this is my husband, Daniel, and we are going to be your best friends for the next 90 minutes. We are so proud of you for telling us what you need. That took a lot of courage, and we'd be proud of our own kids for taking the risk you took. We're all going to be okay, and we're here for you, so just tell us what you need. He told us his name was Braden, and that he was 16. He said, I play the guitar, ukulele, and piano. And he told us that he just finished recording his first album. I told him that I spent my life recording music too, and I asked him if he had an album on him that I could buy. He pulled one out of his backpack, signed it, and gave it to me. And I reached into my backpack and gave him all of our traveling cash. But here's the most important thing, something that Braden can teach all of us. When you need help from people, take the risk and ask for it. I need you to talk to me right now. When life gets turbulent, we tend to close our eyes and collapse inward and get really quiet. But no, that won't work. Braden showed us a better way. Look around, open up, put yourself out there, and ask for help. And the message for the rest of us is, pay attention. Listen to those who need help, and do your best to provide it. Daniel concluded, Yesterday with Braden was holy ground. It was one of the most beautiful conversations we've had in a very long time. And it's because someone took the risk of being honest. So be like Braden and take the risk. And for the rest of us, be alert. Pay attention. I love that. Be alert. Pay attention. And let's add one more thing. Do the work of Christ. Like the people on the plane, we all have had those moments in our lives 
when time stopped, moments when the emotional impact was so great we felt as though time stood still, moments in which our lives were changed forever. And that little moment on that plane was a life-changing moment, not just for a 16-year-old musician, but for his seat companions as well. And you know, I think that's what God's advent was with the birth of Christ. That moment when time hovered between old and new, between death and a newborn babe who drew the newness of everlasting life into a tired and very cynical world. And we've all had our own moments of time out of time, haven't we? Those moments when we are alert and God calls us to act, to reach out to those in need. And we may decide that those are incidents of no meaning beyond a passing moment. When a word of praise was given, we loaned someone some money. Perhaps we did some small favor for someone. Or we may sense that God is in each of those moments. And as a result, each of those moments change us and we become more courageous and more considerate and more compassionate. And we come to understand that those advents of God into our lives give us a chance to see clearly the truth, which before we've either ignored or have been just off to the side, just beyond our view. You know, we have a choice, and Jesus tells us that. We can live by faith in ourselves, or we can live by faith in God. We can trust our jobs, our money, our connections, or we can walk with God and trust that all will be well. If we choose to trust ourselves, our bottom line, the day will come when all will be snatched from our hands. And when people ask what we left behind, the answer will be everything. But if we choose to trust in Christ, we will have Christ in life and Christ in death. There will be no moment when Christ will not walk with us. No day when Christ will not be there to give us hope, to give us strength, to give us joy. And we will be able to face good times and bad in faith that we are in God's hands. And we will be able to face life with faith and death with hope. So as we begin our Advent season, let us focus with Luke, not on the first coming of Christ, but beyond to the second coming. And let us be alert and awake that we might be mindful of how we honor Christ in our daily lives and how we reach out and honor Christ in the lives of others. You know, I, I hope that we might be agents of God's love and, and touch other lives with our words and with our deeds and pray that when we touch those lives, that not only do we experience hope and joy, but the people that we reach out and touch might experience not just our advent into their lives, but the advent of Christ into their lives. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, how we do so appreciate this season in which our whole focus is on you and on your son, that you so generously shared with all of us and continue to share his spirit within our lives. We pray that in this coming Advent season, we might be more mindful of those who need a good listening to, and that we might be the ones that can provide it. So be with us in hope and in peace and in joy and in love. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 244, uh, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. So let us sing together.
it is comfortable for you to do so to uh, rise for the benediction. Remember that God's presence and promises are real. Go into the world carrying God's love and hope to all you meet. Amen.